We've got an ESP32 here, but this video is about using this ESP32 with this LCD touchscreen and SD card interface. So I'm going to go over the features of the things which I've programmed uh, and have on this display here. Uh, and then I'll go over the, an overview of how I've constructed my application. Uh, and I'm going to use it as a template for future applications as well. Uh, and at the end of the video, I'll show you some of the, the key parts of the software, uh, which are used to actually interface with the LCD display touchscreen and SD card off of one SPI port. So the application I've got here that I've written, uh, just as a template, and there's still plenty I need to do before the template's complete, uh, but I've got um, a display where I've got some icons uh, for an application. And if I press uh, one of the icons, it goes into uh, the feature that that icon would represent. But here I've just got, um, just for, for testing my drawing circles and squares and lines, and within a window and making sure that uh, the clipping works around the window. So that was just really a test screen at the minute. Uh, and also what I've, uh, something I've got to do is compress the image files on the SD card because reading from the SD card over SPI isn't particularly fast. Uh, so I'm going to need to compress them because I'm just storing bitmap files and I really need to compress them uh, to speed up the reading back of them off the SD card. Um, so another display I've done is the system information. Uh, this is a great thing about the SP32 is that it has performance monitoring built into it uh, and there's lots of great example code which comes with the IDE and I've used uh, quite a bit of the uh, example uh, example code in some of the coding that I've been doing uh, and this task manager um, or ta task, mo task monitor is one of the pieces of example code uh, which I've taken from the examples and it shows that actually most of so I've got two cores on the SP32 uh, and it's mostly uh, idle and to, to actually um, measure every second the uh, performance of the tasks uh, and display them on the SD on the S uh, on the LCD display uh, only takes up about two percent of a second uh, to actually do that uh, and the reason for that I think mainly is because although it's refreshing refreshing the whole display here it actually does it over DMA so the the CPU doesn't actually do, do much to the uh, display uh, displaying of the um, of the communication of to the SPI and to the LCD display, uh, which is the slowest part. So all it does is it prepares the data, sells to the DMA controller, okay, send this data to across the SPI to the display, and so the CPU doesn't do that, it's the DMA that does that, uh, and it helps a lot. And that's one of the fantastic things about the SP32. The more I use it, the more I see how fantastic uh, this device is. And then if I go back again to the icon display uh, and I've just got one more icon which I've programmed at the minute uh, and that's info so I'm just displaying information about the application the IDF version of the SP32 development environment I'm using and information taken from calling uh, functions within the ID to, to test what kind of ESP32 I've got and it's got two cores so Rev1 with Wi-Fi Bluetooth and BL8 Bluetooth flow in energy it's got four megabytes of external flash. And the last time it was reset, it was on the power on. So to go for an overview of the way the system is currently set up to work. So you've got the SP32 dev kit there. Uh, and when it boots up, uh, it starts the main thread of execution as usual, like um, the function main. And function main just starts off a series of four other threads of execution which are required in the application uh, and then the 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 main up the main application then terminates and uh, the main thread of execution uh, no longer exists and you're just left with the four threads of execution down here and the, one of the really good things about uh, free artos which come which is integrated within the ide or the idf sorry um is that you can actually pin threads to cores of the ESP32. So I've, I've pinned three of my threads here to core one, and then my application thread I've dedicated to core two. And I've done that deliberately because the application that I'm going to be working on, I want to make sure that that gets interrupted as little as possible uh, and has as little chance of failing as possible. So therefore, if I put all the user interface stuff on core one, and just the application stuff on core two, and I'm very careful how I interact with each other, um, hopefully that will reduce the risk of anything untoward happening uh, to the main application. 
Uh, but as far as my threads go, I've got a user thread, and all this what this handles is user interactions. Uh, so, for example, from touch screen, uh, when someone touches the screen, this has to um, react to that and perform whatever user interaction is required. Uh, maybe in the future, I might add some switches, physical switches to to uh, the project, and this would then have to deal with um, the physical switches. But it, it handles the GPIO stuff which is only user interactions, not, not any other GPO stuff. And then I've got an LCD thread, and this is dedicated to updating the LCD display. Um, so uh, other parts of the application tell this when it when they want to up, uh, put something onto the display, and then this handles if it's the right moment to put it on the display and, and how it gets put on the display. Uh, I have a monitoring thread. This is kind of a debugger monitoring thread um, for... Just, just kind of background um, stuff to make sure that the, the application is working okay. So even in uh, the run runtime environment, not just the development environment, but when I get out into the field, there's some things I can diagnose if something doesn't look like it's working properly. Uh, and then, of course, the application thread, which I've talked about before, which is going to be dedicated to just running the application. So um, when it comes to the hardware... So at the minute I've got the SD card reader, I've got the touchscreen and the LCD display. Now they're on this, all on the same PCB, but they're three separate interfaces. Uh, they each have their own pins for SPI. So the, the LCD display has its uh, SPI pins, the touchscreen has its SPI pins, SD card reader has its own SP, SPI pins as well. The touchscreen also has an interrupt pin uh, in addition. Uh, the LCD display also has some additional pins, uh, such as backlight and um, command and data. It has, it has a pin to switch between command and data mode. Um, so there's a few additional uh, GPIO pins as well. Uh, but because I'm connecting them all to the same uh, SPI port on the SP32, so I'm connecting to the SP port, SPI port called HSPI. So there's an HSPI and a VSPI, but I just want to tie all these to HSPI. And then if I ever need another SPI port, I don't have to worry about um, this port, I can just use VSPI uh, and not interrupt in any way that this works. Uh, but in order to get access, because because um, I've got multiple threads, so things have to be thread safe. So, uh, for example, the user thread might want to access the SD card, but while that's happening, the LCD thread might want to access the display to update the display, but they can't communicate at the same time because they'll because they're using the same SPI port. So what you need is some way of locking it. So I'll, you create a, like a virtual lock with this. Uh, a free RTOS operating system semaphore. So again, another fantastic way that the uh, it's integrated with um, uh, the free RTOS stuff. Uh, and what would happen is if the user application, the user thread wants to access the SD card, it would say to the semaphore, uh, give me a lock so that I can access the uh, SD card. And the semaphore might say, well, actually it's a bit busy at the minute because the LCD uh, displays or uh, the LCD thread's already got a lock on it because it's updating the display, uh, at which point the user thread can either, it can, when it requests it, it can say, well, if it fails, just um, let me know and I'll continue doing something else and I'll come back later. Or it can say, if it fails, then just wait. And when it's got a lock, then we'll continue execution. So it will just wait until it gets execution, uh, gets a lock, and then it just um, uses the uh, port from there on. Uh, and that's the way that uh, access to any any of these devices is achieved. Uh, so whatever needs to access the device uh, has to get a lock first, and then it can access the device. Once once the device so once it's got a lock, so say the user has a lock on the uh, in order to use the SD card, it doesn't have to release that lock if it wants to do something with the display as well. Although in this case it wouldn't because of the, it's only the LCD thread. But if it wanted to access multiple ones of these devices it could do that with the same lock because the lock locks all three items because they're all on the same SPI port. So if I come down now to the touch screen, so the touch screen has like I said earlier has an interrupt. Uh, so when someone touches the the screen it only it will generate an interrupt then. So you don't have to poll the screen, you don't have to keep uh, saying to the screen is anyone touched it, is anyone touching it, anyone touching. You can do a very inefficient thing where the screen says okay someone's touched it and what that will do is it will put in uh, put a message for the user in, the, in a user message queue. And this is another feature of uh, the FreeRTOS um, operating system integration is that you can create these queues. And you, so I've created one for user. I've also created one for uh, the LCD. So 
any user interface. So if I had um, switches here, I could I could uh, generate an interrupt on on a switch, uh, and then that could send a message to the user queue as well. Uh, and all that happens with the user queue is um, it'll queue up the items that, um, of messages. Uh, for the user thread and when the user thread gets time it will say okay what's my, what's the next thing I need to do and ask for the next message and it'll go through the messages which um, are queued up for it and it'll, it'll handle what it needs to do for each of those messages uh, and same again for the LCD display so when things have got things to, to display they'll queue them up in the LCD display queue but this is it actually handles it quite well because what happens is it will not only put the message in there, but within that message, it will put a pointer to the data which actually has to be displayed. Uh, so it can queue up a, a bunch of data which needs to be displayed. And when the LCD thread gets time, it gets to the message and it says, okay, what do I need to do? And if, if the data is relevant to what's currently being displayed, then it'll say, okay, well, I'll take them and actually put it on the display. But if, it, if it's not, if it's for some, some other display which isn't being displayed, then it can say, well, I don't need this, I'll ignore it. Um, and, and what the thread will do is it will take the data, it will put it on the display, uh, and then because the data is no longer required, the, the LCD thread will uh, free up the memory which the data occupied, uh, so you don't get any memory leaks. Uh, and that's the basic overview of how, how it currently operates. Okay, I'm going to go through a few of the bits of code um, to do with the FreeRTOS integration um, into the... Uh, into the ESP32 stuff. So first we'll send in the message. So what you do is construct a variable which you want to send. Uh, and when you create a message queue, you tell it how big the variable you're gonna send is. Uh, and then you just call a function like this. Uh, so this one has got from I interrupt service routine, uh, but you can have it uh, without the interrupt service routine uh, um, if you're not sending it from inside of the interrupt service routine. Um, you tell it what the queue handle is, so you, when you create a queue, you get a queue handle back. And then you just pass a reference to the uh, to the actual message you're sending, and that will go into the queue, uh, and then you can uh, go into a, a loop, which I'll show you up at the top here. So this is a, a message loop. So in the receiving part, what you do is you do, you do a loop, um, which goes through um, receiving messages from the queue. And then each time around the loop, you can check what, what the message is. So in this case, a message for a touch event from an interrupt um, is being detected. Uh, and then it just so happens I'm uh, using the semaphore to lock um, the SPI device because I'm about to access the touch touch device here. So um, so I power on the, LCD, the touchpad on the LCD display. I get the X, Y, and Z um, locations of where the touch was, and then I power off the um, touchpad on the LCD display, and then I can do whatever I need to do with those coordinates. And then at the end, you must you must gotta make sure that you would um, free up the SIM for that you took to lock the SPI device. Otherwise, nothing else will be able to access it, and things will just lock up. So after you've um, used your SPI device, free up the SIM for, uh, and then you can continue like that.